Okay, um, what I'm going to attempt to do is show you how I select stocks uh, using earnings reports and then a watch list. And my goal is not just to show you individual stocks, but hopefully show you how a uh, you know, method you can apply on your own, maybe with some tweaking. So first of all, here's the company earnings reports I got from Investors Business Daily. And you'll see today there's 43 stocks that are reporting higher earnings. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll through real quickly. And I'm going to type any over here that look like they might be potential candidates. So the first one I see is EAT. And that's uh, Brinker International. They're retail restaurants, and they've had a very impressive. Oops, I'm sorry, I was working too fast. Uh, actually, their their earnings growth was only 26 percent, so we're going to skip them. But I do see one right above them, B E R Y, which is Berry Plastics, and they've had a very nice 59. 0.1% uh, earnings growth uh, over the same quarter last year. And the lovely thing about Investors, or, uh, Investors Business Daily is they show you the stocks with extremely good earnings growth in bold. So they're very easy to pick out. And another one here is CRME. I'll type in. Uh, nice 150% uh, earnings growth. And that's it for this particular column. I'm also going to skim through. I don't see any potential short candidates. So we'll go down. And now uh, here's drill quip. I'm going to type it. I've, I've got some reservations about anything in oil and gas I may share with you later. And sure enough, here's another one. One of my reservations about oil and gas stocks, this uh, FRM, Firmamate Corp, if I pronounce it right, is I'm seeing a lot of them. And that sort of suggests to me that this may be just a cyclical thing, that all of these boats are rising because of general economic conditions. There may be nothing exceptional about these companies. And also, I feel like down the line, uh, we may reject them anyway if they're doing something that's hazardous to the environment. That may not be a good risk for us. Let's see. Uh, Johnson Outdoors had a 50%. That's J O U T. Uh, we'll just keep scrolling down. Uh, let's scroll up a bit. Went too far down. Um, Here's Louisiana Bank Corp, LA, Bank Corp LABC, but again, I don't look at uh, banking stocks per se because they're accounting methods. I'm not saying they're dishonest, but they're just more complicated than I want to tackle. Uh, Maxwell Tech looks good. MXWL, oh, this thing keeps popping up. 400% growth, really nice, but the price per share is only 9.43 and uh, i've found that if it's lower than $9 excuse me lower than $10 a share it's probably not a terrifically good risk uh, Northside Realty here, NRF, might be a good candidate for a short stock. Um, they're lost money both quarters, but again, and it's less than $10 a share, but it's a finance company, and I just prefer not to have to cope with them. Okay, so we're just about to the end of the ones that are up. And any others? Uh, sealed Air. SCE and TDS. You see where I'm getting this? TDS 264 and 264 percent increase uh, over the same quarter last year. US Cellular is another potential one. And it's USM is their ticker symbol. At 173, uh, no potential short candidates. Uh, here's the banking stock. We're just going to ignore it. 49% uh, just under our cap. We want a 50% growth, not a 49%. And lastly, uh, another oil gas. Let's just give that one a miss. Now let's look at the 27 down. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll through real quick. We want to see one that has negative numbers in both columns. 
and I don't think I'm going to see any. Yep, there's one. Nope. There's one. Let's see. PVG. Okay, this is potentially, it's a mining company. They're less than $8 a share. They've lost money uh, both quarters, so probably for two years now, and less than $10 a share. So we wrote PVG. Any others? This one's too low. You can't short it if it's less than $5 a share. Here's a nice one. Real estate. Hmm. TPGI. That's sort of the same as finance. I'm a little itchy about those, and I don't entirely trust them. Uh, and again, this is not this is not a comment on their accounting practices. It really has to do with my own level of expertise or lack thereof. And that's it. Okay, so now I'm going to close that out. And we're going to go to my Ameritrade account. I should already be signed in. And here's my watch list. Uh, this is one I call Invest. And this is short, so it's very simple. We're just going to take our potential investment candidates copy, paste, add the symbol. And while we're at it, let's do the same for these short candidates. Now, copy, and we'll just paste them in here. Oh, did I just mess up? No, I didn't. Okay, paste, add symbol. Now, the trick is, uh, as you'll see now, we have quite a few potential long stocks. I only want to have three. So I'm going to start looking for reasons to get rid of some of these. Right away, I can see that I don't want FRM because the price is less than $10 a share. Ouch, I sure don't want CRME. I'm surprised I slipped that one through. So let's go ahead and get rid of those two. So I'm going to go in, and you can do this if you don't have an Ameritrade account. You can also create a um, watch list with uh, Yahoo Finance. Save watch list. Okay, let's see if there's any others we can get rid of very quickly. As I scroll over, a little pop, a box will pop up. You can see the chart for United Cellulars. Ah, they had a dip real recently. You see where it goes into the red? <laughs> I have a very simple motto. I only invest in stocks that go up. Uh, TDS looks a little weak too. C, that's a nice one. So let's get rid of USM and TDS because I didn't really care for their charts. You might think that it would be a good idea to invest in stocks that have gone down because you think, well, they're going to bounce back. But the reality is that stocks that go up tend to go up and stocks that go down tend to go down. There's a Wall Street saying, the trend is your friend. Okay, let's see. All of these look pretty good. Okay, now we're going to have to do some more digging to really look at them. One that I've kind of decided I want to get rid of is this one, Navigant Consulting. Nothing wrong with them. They're a beautiful little company, but the problem is it's a consulting firm. And what that means is in order for them to grow, they're going to have to find more, or I didn't mean to do that, they're going to have to find more qualified consultants. And I think that ultimately is going to set a limit on their growth and is going to make it hard for them to grow. So I'm going to get rid of NCI. I wasn't that fond of it anyway. And let's go back to these others. We're still trying to get these down. So let's look at each one. We're going to pop up C here. Ouch, look at that. They've got a discrepancy. The earnings per share is a negative 790. Well, I certainly don't want to invest in any company that's losing money. So let's get rid of that one. Save watch list. Now let's look at Jout, which was Johnson Outdoors. Uh, looks pretty good on the surface. Okay, market cap is 266 million. I like to find stocks between a hundred million and a billion. Much smaller than that and nobody notices them at all which is ultimately bad and a lot bigger than that and 
they don't have as much room to grow. A $20 billion stock, dollar stock is going to have a lot harder time doubling in size than a $200 million. Um, the P.E. ratio, that's the uh, price, you know, the, the ratio between the price and the earnings is only 13. And since they've got a 50, at least a 50% earnings growth, that's very nice. So let's look at their earnings while we're at it. Well, the chart tells the story. Um, they've had very substantial earnings growth. So let's go back. It looks like C is going to be a keeper for the time being. I'm not going to bother to read these research reports right now. Ameritrade is very handy this way, but I can tell everybody's rating it either hold to strong buy. So for the moment, uh, Johnson Outdoors is going to make it. I think I called it the wrong thing. I think I called it C. And DRQ. Hmm. Price of DRQ is a little pricey, and it's a $4.2 billion stock. And the, we don't want the P.E. ratio here to get above 25. So that's a no-brainer. We can dump him right now. So pardon me while I navigate back and forth through this rascal. I'm sure I could be faster. Let's look at Barry. We're going to get rid of DRQ in the fullness of time. Another $2 billion stock. The P.E. ratio is over 50. Not interested. OK, where were we? Barry we looked at. Did we look at Barry? Let's just look at it. Yeah, yeah, we looked at Barry. Onik, perhaps it is. This is one of the ones I think I had before. Uh, P.E. is a little high. 26. Um, let's take a look at their earnings. Hmm, yeah, I mean, it's definitely going up. Uh, this may be a tough call here. Let's see. The market cap. Let's see what everybody says. Everybody, again, hold to long. They're strong buys, but they're, they're positive. Uh, I tell you what, this is this is a little sad thing to me. I don't like it going down. It, it lost money in the early part of the year. <sighs> is there anything else I want to look at just at the moment? I tell you what, this is a, this is a narrow decision. But the idea here is we're going to throw away all the pearls and all the rubies, and we're only going to hold on to the diamonds. Here's really what's going to decide it for me. The PE is just a little bit higher than my threshold. I would like the earnings growth to be at least twice the PE. Okay, the PE, therefore, I want to be 25 or lower. It's just a hair too high. So I'm going to scrap it. Sorry about that, Anika Therapeutics. Let's go back to our watch list and call some of these suckers. So we're going to get rid of Anika. Edit. We're going to save Jout. We're going to get rid of Barry, Anika and DRQ and we're down to three stocks oh did I save that one? I didn't mean to save him I actually meant to get rid of Navigant Consulting maybe God is talking to me now real quick let me see which one of these three I meant to save add symbol was it Barry? no Barry's too high Maybe I'm going to keep this one after all. We just don't know. DRQ. Let's see what DRQ was about. That was pretty high price. Yeah. Huh. Well, it looks like Navigate Consulting. Uh, Got spared after all. Okay, now on to the possible short stocks. All of these less than ten dollars a share. Let's take a look. Oop, he's going up. Okay, I won't bet against a company that's going up for the same reason I won't bet on a company that's going down. That's very easy. 
Now I've got three stocks in my investment watch list and three stocks in my potential shorts. Uh, I think I may have let one of these in the investment category fall through the cracks, but that's okay because tomorrow's another day and I'll have a new set of stocks to look at. Note that none of these am I ready to buy yet, but when the time comes for me to buy, I would tell you right now that I would feel very good about buying any one of those three, NCI, Stamp, or Chout. And obviously when the time comes, I'll look at them each more closely to make my final selection. But I think I've got three solid candidates right now, and that is how it's done.